Hi. So this is my fifth or sixth attempt at recording this. Things keep going wrong. Not anything to do with the code. Anyway, we're going to get through this one. So what I want to do is show you textures in 3Z and how they're different from 3. There's a lot of steps in 3, and I feel like there's a lot of steps that can be left out. There's stuff that you might see in an example, but stuff that you really should do in production. Does everyone always do it? Who knows? So we're going to start with the 3JS example, and then we're going to make the 3Z version of the same example. So let's jump into some code. Here I've just got an empty um, code sandbox. I've got an app.js so far, just with the 3JS import in it. I've got this texture that we're going to import. And all we're going to do is jump straight into the 3JS examples. Kind of jump into this simple example here of a crate spinning with that texture on it. And all I'm going to do is copy this whole example out. Pop it in, and then I'm going to try and run it. We won't see anything because my GIF is in the root rather than being in a textures folder. So that's all that's different from the example. Cool. And now we have our texture on a cube. Reasonably straightforward. Look at everything that's had to be done to get there. And imagine you're trying to learn 3JS for the first time, or if you just want to try something out quickly, you've got to remember to set your camera scene and renderer, in this case, in the global scope, the mesh also in the global scope, running init and animate. We all kind of know those functions at this stage if you've been doing 3 for a while, but that doesn't feel neat. Where is animate? Why is it all up here? We're setting up camera. We're setting up our scene, like we've already called scene up here, and now we're instantiating scene. Here we're loading the actual GIF, and that's going to take a little while. So our geometry and material, when we actually run the first frame, although that's not going to be ready. We've got to set up our renderer. We're trying to do blah, blah, blah. There's a lot here. We're trying to put in a window resize function, which is actually good practice. Then imagine we have three or four more textures we want to bring in, and maybe a model or two. They're going to start popping in one by one as they're ready, or worse, you might get an error. You might be especially, and that's where I'm trying to go with Freezy is for when people are trying to start. Imagine you're doing something locally and you're importing a GLB. That might come really quickly. You might get away with it. If you're if you're doing it a similar way to this but then when you do it live people have poor connections it's going to come in later you might end up ruining your animation function not having the correct pieces there the solution to that in three is to use the loading manager but now we've got to go and find out how to use the loading manager especially for beginners this is so much code it's so complicated I mean, I'll admit it took me a few months to start to get the hang of 3JS. I didn't just jump in and, and get it. So how does this look in 3Z? I'm going to fork this. So I've named them all terribly now. Um, but 3Z imported texture, we call it 3Z demo. Okay. So how do we want to do this? First things first. Well, let's look at the docs, actually. That will help a lot. Freezy.org. And we want to go to the menu because we are looking for importing textures. Cool. So we want to import Freezy is the first thing. Let's jump back here. Freezy. Whoa. Let's do all the sky pack for one. So, breezy. 
now we want to go to build and green scene in. Okay. So how does a 3Z project tend to start? We create an app and that's going to be a new 3Z. Do I have that H capitalized up there? I do. And we're going to pass it three. So this is what I showed the last time. This is where things change with textures. So there is a preload object where we tell 3Z, here are all the things I want you to preload. And then we get a post load function, which is using that 3JS loading manager in the background. And when everything's ready, run something else for me. So let's look at that preload object. I might just pull this up here to make it easier to get to it. And I can start to get rid of a lot of this camera stuff. We will keep. This we can get rid of. So this is where we're creating a texture. We keep the geometry, the material, add it. We don't need any of the render stuff. Freezy is going to do that for us. We don't need a resize function. Freezy is going to do that for us. We don't need an animate function to do all of those things. Freezy is going to do everything for us except the actual mesh manipulation. So let's just comment all of these out for a second and add in this object. So what's happening here? So preload, it's just an object. We're passing it an item. Here we're calling a crate, and that's going to end up a variable on app. So when post load runs, we will have app.crate, which will be this texture. If we maybe had all of this added in a Blender file as a GLB. We could just load create.glb and it'll work the same way. Cool. So 3Z is going to look after importing that. And then how do we work with it when it's actually done? We have this post load function that we pass a function to. So I'm going to maybe slow down a little bit here and show you what's happening. So if I console log at this point. We open up our console. Make a little space. So what's going to happen is app is going to instantiate. The preload is going to see cool. We want to load this file. It's a GIF. So we're going to make it a texture loader. We're going to pass it to the loading manager. We're going to call it crate and we're going to attach it to app. So if I save this, we should see, so nothing visually so far, but in here at the bottom, we'll see crate is a texture. So we've just loaded our texture with a loading manager. Everything's working really nicely. So now we can just use it. So we can bring up all of the code we had down here and pop it in that post load function because we want to make sure that everything has loaded, that our texture is there. With our texture, our geometry. Actually, so we don't need this line where we're loading the texture that's being done for us by 3Z. And we can just map app.crate. And let's just make sure that, why is that not happening? Ah, yes, because of all the scoping. So we're just going to say const mesh, and then it's app.scene, and we should be in trouble. Do we need to set these outside? No. Strange. Map parameter is undefined. What am I getting wrong? Mesh standard material. Aha. The crate is huge and we're inside it. So this is why we need the camera pieces. 
I knew I needed to keep those. So this we can set up before post load because we're just adjusting things on app that doesn't require those textures. So just update the app.camera and perfect. So now we just need to rotate it. So we can go app.animate pass an animate function, which is rotating that mesh. And we're done. And I think this is an awful lot easier for someone new to understand. It's certainly easier to try and if you just want to spit something out yourself to get through it very quickly. So let's then if this will let me oh I should have shouldn't have gone through it that way. Maybe I can open them both here. So This, I believe, was the original one, and this is the one we just made with Breezy. I should have been a bit neater with that, but however, here we are. Mm -hmm. Code Sandbox just doesn't seem to be quite as zippy as I would like. Okay, so let's have a look here. <laughs> let's see if we can get these working for us. So I should have hit that. Cool. So this is just to compare 3Z to 3JS. So look at all that we needed to do to get the 3JS example working. 52 lines and that's, I mean, that's not crazy, but it's the amount of knowledge required to know what's what in here. Why is that there at that point in time? Why is it in that scope? Do I need it every time? Why do I need a device pixel ratio when I'm just making a box? That kind of thing. How can we abstract that away for the user? So that's what we've got in 3Z. 29 lines, nicely shorter. And every line though is kind of related to what we're doing, except for the camera. So we could actually this is just because of the example. So if we were to make this one, I think, so it's basically identical. And every word we have here is what we're trying to do. We're trying to get a texture onto a crate. There's nothing else distracting us. There's no boilerplate. And that's where we're trying to get to with 3Z. So hopefully that was useful. Hopefully you enjoy that. Let me know if there's any questions you have, any improvements you think you might want. One thing I'm thinking about is I'm adding all of the uploaded assets, the textures or the models onto the app variable. I think maybe I'll create like an app.textures variable or an app.models variable when you pass those through. But anyway, let me know if there's anything like that you'd like to see. That's that demo for now. And thanks a minute for watching. Cheers.